good morning to everyone and guys i got to give it to you imagine it's a sunday <laughs> you here and not only are you here you're here to listen to people speak the stuff that we used to run away from in school and college and not only are you here to listen to people speak but you bloody well paid for it think about it you're paying on a sunday morning we will be snuggling in bed coming here to listen to people uh, you are the kind of guys who are going to take this country and this world forward but it's not just the youngsters who are here i was sitting with a few people who are well above 70 so ideas actually no no age i'll ask you a couple of questions are there some mics uh, do, do we need mics in the audience okay yeah right uh there's this man in a town oh and incidentally anyone who's read this will not answer because you the whole process will lose its spontaneity then this is a man in a town who's uh, married 20 women okay none of them are divorced he's not divorced he's not been arrested for bigamy or polygamy why any ideas he's a priest <laughs> he marries women off there's another one this is 88 story building a ladder against it and this man cleaning windows on a, on the ladder he falls from the step of the ladder but doesn't die or get hurt doesn't die or get hurt any ideas why yeah you know that uh, can we have a round of applause for those who answered okay why did did i narrate these stories i'm going to talk to you about a little later first i guess uh this is my topic do you know what a streaker is a streaker anyone yeah what jor se bolo i can't hear you okay anyways uh any match football soccer cricket this lady or the man birthday suit runs across streaks across seen that guy so i'm here to make you all streakers are you ready for it we need to make you streakers <laughs> but of a different kind know this guy archimedes and i'm here to tell you how you all can become archimedes you already are archimedes for all you know but probably don't realize it w- what did archimedes do he was uh, if you remember the story the legend goes that king heron got a gold crown made for himself and he he was not very sure whether this crown was pure gold or that goldsmith had put some cheap metal in it mixed it to make more money as we always do so what he did was archimedes was a already a renowned scientist of the era heron called archimedes and gave him the crown and said look you don't need to touch it you know i mean um, take a piece of it rub it against anything don't do anything to it which will uh, take away its beauty but you still have to tell me whether it's pure gold archimedes started working on it he couldn't figure out he, he, he did everything he could but he couldn't really figure out how will he come to know as without breaking a piece of it and analyzing it whether this is pure gold or not so what did he do he just thought about it he couldn't come to a conclusion one morning when he was about to get into his bath tub stepped in and he sees water flow out as soon as he stepped into the bath tub and what happened he is said to have run naked through the streets of greece shouting eureka eureka betla betla mil gaya mil gaya all right <laughs> what happened when he was least expecting it when he wasn't working on the problem like a lightning stroke it struck him that's how solutions happen and it happens to all of us every day remember we meet someone or we see someone in the party and he is called naam kya i am forgetting that name please how do i go and meet him now i don't even know his name so you avoid that person then get busy with something else and then when you drive out when you're driving and suddenly abhi ye to wo tha right had this moment okay that's your aha moment or you trying to remember a song you know it's on the tip of my tongue pull it out it doesn't come out it's on the tip of my tongue i can't 
you, you try your best, you focus all your energies in trying to recollect and the song doesn't come to you. And when then you are out somewhere on a walk and it hits you. Doesn't happen to all of us? That's the Eureka moment. That's the aha moment. So there is something more powerful than us, our conscious mind, which we, you know, human beings unfortunately are the most egoistic animals on this planet. A lion never thinks he's a lion. A rose doesn't think he's more beautiful than a lotus. Neither does a cabbage think that the lotus is more beautiful than it. Human beings are the only ones who believe we are the best. I know best. I know all. Okay? And in this whole race of our dominance and egomaniacal problems that we have, what do we do? <clears throat> we, we tend to believe and we've been made to believe this since our childhood that if we try, if we focus, if we apply all our concentration, we will get to answers, solutions. That's how we've been trained to come to answers. Unfortunately, yeah, that is a part of the story. Yes, you do have problems of which solutions can be arrived at by this methodology. But there is a completely different methodology also. And which is uh, when your unconscious mind, okay, uh, I was reading a lot on the psychology and these aspects of it, neurosciences of it. There's a bit of a confusion between subconscious, unconscious. The word they use is unconscious. Consciously, I'm not using the word subconscious, but unconscious. Okay. And they always give this example of the 10% of the iceberg, which is the consciousness, way above, and 90% in the unconscious, which is down below, which we don't know of. And that's the gold mine we don't mine ever. All right. So if we give that a chance, that will have better solutions. Are you with me on this? Huh? So for, for a moment, take the back seat. Let something else take over. They'll provide you the solution. You don't need to worry too much. I'm going to be talking about, and I have evolved since I'm in the business of ideas. Me being in an advertising agency, that's my bread and butter. <coughs> I didn't know about all this, <coughs> but I used to often find, you know, when I was stuck for campaign ideas, advertising ideas, uh, product parity situations, every product is trying to be better than the other, they're basically the same. How do you come up with a better idea? I used to often find that I get my best ideas in my shower. So I started having longer showers. So there are ways that you'll have to work out your own routine. So being in the business of advertising, I, I used to get these kind of flashes and then I realized, I read and I understood that my unconscious mind was far, far more powerful than my conscious mind. And then I evolved my own system. I'm not saying that this is uh, something that only I have developed. There are various models and I read through. Then I read a lot about this methodology and I found way back in 1826, there were people who had um, outlined these ideas. I'm forgetting the names now. I have them in my pocket, but no point reading it out to you. And then there was in 1930s, <coughs> An uh, advertising guy called James Webb Yag, who has come up with this idea. In 1890, there was a uh, guy called Heron, uh, Henry Penirachon, some a French guy, Henry, okay? And Roy, they pronounce it, I don't know. So there are various people at various points in time who have written about the same thing. But I, what applied to me, what gave me results, I worked out in my own model. So that's what we're going to be exploring in a while. Are we clear with this? Should I take that man away? Now, are you ready to be uh, stickers? Sure? Yeah, great. What does this remind you of? There are a lot of engineers in the hall, I know. Kekule, right? And benzene. Just keep this in your mind. When, you know, uh, when you didn't have the ring formation of uh, molecules in organic chemistry, and everyone was trying to work out as to how all the bonds of carbon, with due apologies to those who don't know chemistry. <laughs> okay, and I want to prove I know a lot of chemistry, though I flunked. <laughs> so, uh, six uh, atoms of carbon, how do you satisfy their bonds? They have four bonds each, and um, till then, aromatic uh, compounds in terms of ring structures were not known. So this guy had been working on it. He was a scientist, he'd spent his entire life trying to uncover this mystery, and he was unable to do it. And one night, he dreamt of a snake with its own tail in its mouth. This dream of a snake with the tail in its own mouth. Next morning, he kept, kept that dream didn't go away. He kept thinking about it. He kept thinking about it. And then he realized, why am I always, all the chemists then, uh, thinking of 
molecular structures either in linear form or branched form it could be a ring and that's when that aha moment occurred to him so whether it was einstein when he looked at relativity a train passing a man on a building he thought if lightning strikes this uh, train at two points the beginning at the end and there's one man who's stationary say in a building and another man in opposite train moving would they see the same thing at the same time and he realized that's when the concept of relativity came to him there are various others i can go on giving examples so scientist isaac asimov for example he used to get his best ideas when he was watching movies so the idea is people across domains have finally realized that something is more powerful than they themselves and that is the power of the unconscious there was a study which was conducted very briefly i'll tell you about the study conducted by sophie elwood on uh, 90 uh, undergraduate students and he gave them a task which um, which actually had to they had to use their minds focus uh, to come to a solution and he gave them 4 minutes to execute that task the first group he divided them into three groups first group he gave them 4 minutes complete focus second group 4 minutes divided into two halves in between one minute of some related another other activity which in this uh, in this case was uh, finding out synonyms for words okay he gave them a word and told them get to synonyms and finally to the last group two minutes two blocks each divided by another minute of doing an unrelated task completely unrelated which was here the meyer briggs uh, uh, typo typing psycho personality typing uh, the third one okay so just remember this first group four minutes uninterrupted work on this problem second group two two minutes each with one minute of a related break last group two two minutes each one minute of unrelated break guess what happened the results are there the first group came up with 6.9 ideas of how do you use a paper the, the problem that he gave them was how do you use paper in different ways okay we all of us use papers to write rap etc but ideas which were unconventional that could be paper could be used for 6.9 number of ideas usable group 1 group 2 7.6 group 3 9.8 that means when you are focused on a task if you leave your, leave your mind alone in something else for a while you are going to be more productive all right uh, for those of who are on twitter you now know why i tweet so much <laughs> all right i keep I, un unfortunately uh, the, the blocks change one hour of tweeting 10 minutes of work that's what happens to me fortunately i'm not employed <laughs> so uh, my model as i call it and this is what the takeaway is from here from today if you start practicing this i have done it and uh, therefore i can vouch for it myself with results all right you can actually come up with better richer more number of ideas so that's the takeaway from here i call it the five i model the first i is ingredients like any person who is baking a cake or anything making anything he knows you need raw material for anything so if you're working on a project you need raw material in terms of data figures items ideas etc etc all that is raw material now there are two kinds of raw material that your mind works on one is uh, specific to the task at hand all right so say if you're working on uh, you've got to build a mobile app and mobile app you need to know operating systems of mobile phones you need to know how mobile phone works you need to have software knowledge etc the language that you're programming in etc etc so all that is specific to the task that you are at hand all right so if you you that is learnable you can learn it over a period of 6 months 8 months 1 year etc etc all right so that is one kind of raw material the second kind of raw material is more important okay in, for breakthrough ideas which is all that that has gone into this head all your lives all that you've read seen traveled um, uh, classics of english that you've read the pulp the pawn everything all right everything actually it said nothing ever leaves your mind every exposure whether it's aud uh, audio fragrance you will watch for it you're walking somewhere there's a certain fragrance and that fragrance suddenly takes you somewhere else and send some different kinds of memories hua hai ke nahi aapke sath one kind of fragrance suddenly some you reminded of some sequence in your life which you thought you'd been completely forgotten about happened so everything and and we've seen this happen in um, accident where people have had head injuries you've seen come them coming up with um different scenarios which 
their parents or their children didn't know about, they themselves have thought they've forgotten about. So please remember, this hard disk here is more powerful than any other hard disk that you've ever seen installed on any machine. It records every little detail. In fact, in Hindu uh, mytholo not mythology, in Hindu philosophy, it is said these are the sanskaras we carry into the next birth. Also, I don't know, all right? But that's how powerful this hard disk is. So, all those exposures that you've had. So, the more diversified the exposures, the more jungle treks that you've done, uh, the more uh, swimming or the more um, pulp you've read, kind of people you've interacted with, tribals, se leke to most sophisticated people. All that is rich material here. All this is your raw material. Just imagine if you're looking through a kaleidoscope and there are different patterns being formed. If there are only blue colored strands, glass strands inside, any pattern that will be formed will have what? One color? Blue, right? But if there are 100 different colors of strands inside, what will happen? A very, very colorful, rich uh, pattern will emerge, right? The same thing is happening here because what is happening, another neuroscientist, I'll talk about it later because I don't know, I'm, I may have run out of time. So this is ingredients, two kinds of ingredients, got it? One is specific to the task, you have to know that. And two is all that diverse exposures, experiences that you've had. Second is involvement. This is where you make your conscious mind work, all right? You actually make it ha get into that phase where it does all the hard work it can to the largest extent it can. All right. Feel the material all over in your mind, turn it around, look at the various possibilities. The whole idea is that let it seep into you, deep inside. All right. This is the second stage where you're consciously working on the material, which leads you to the third stage, that of the incubation. In my opinion, the single most important stage, wherein you don't do anything of conscious uh, nature on that particular project or the idea that you're working on. You leave it completely alone. But mind to mind hai. The moment you say, I'm not going to think about it, what will the mind do? You're already thinking about it. In fact, uh, there are a lot of youngsters here, I'm sure you'll have had affairs, all right? And then there'll, there'll be breakups or fights too. And then you fought, what do you do? You go home and you're in your bed. I'm not going to think about her anymore. <laughs> What's happening? You're doing nothing but thinking about her. So the more you don't think about her, the more you think about it. All right, so you have to get away from this. Uh, because if you ever planted a seed for a plant to come up, do you, oh, actually after planting the seed, do you dig it again to see whether the seed is being actually planted or not planted? Whether it's sprouting or not sprouting? Do you do that? What will happen if you do that? It'll never sprout. All right, similarly, you've laid the seed. Now you have to run away from it. You don't have to, you have to do something that interests you, takes you away from it. There's a reason for this which I'll come to if I get the time. Go for a walk. If you play games, play cards, billiards, chess, swimming, movie, whatever interests you, go, go and get your mind diverted from the idea at hand to that. And when? When you're least expecting it. When you didn't, don't really know that it's going to hit you. Suddenly, all like a flash of lightning, a bolt of lightning. There's a birth of an idea. It strikes you, hits you. And you have to be ready for it in terms of, you have to recognize this. Remember Kekule? If he had seen that dream of a snake with its own tail in its mouth, and said, kya sapna dekh liya, and you know, forget about it, he would have lost the idea. The beauty of this language of the subconscious, the unconscious is, it has its own language. It sends symbols, signals, which the conscious mind has to decipher. The language of the unconscious is very different from the language of the conscious mind. So you have to then recognize it. Okay, there is a germ of an idea in this. Incidentally, most good ideas are lost, lost at this stage. So it may strike you. Sometimes, of course, there are cases where you have had the complete idea as one. Paul McCartney, uh, the song Yesterday, anyone heard it? It's the most recorded, of course, new generation betty. They would never have <laughs> Paul McCartney as an ancient guy now. All right? It's the most recorded song in history. They're working on this tune for a new song. Okay? And um, they were not able to come up with anything exciting. Okay? And what happened was, one morning, it is said, Paul, and it is, he's, he's actually recorded that. I got up in the morning with the entire tune in my mind, as it is. 
the, the melody of the song. And that was it. Yesterday. So sometimes they come in completed form. Other times they don't. Anyways, so once you've got the idea, then the third, st uh, the next stage is implementation where you polish it. Because as I said, you get a raw diamond. Now you have to chisel it, polish it to figure out how best to present it. All right? That's the next I. This is the rather easier task. So Kekule saw a snake, then he worked on it, and then he came to the precise arrangement of atoms in the benzene molecule. So that's how the Twitter bird incidentally came about. That's the finished form of the Twitter bird. But there are two caveats to this. You've, you've understood the process, the five eyes. You understood. You think it is usable, okay? Yeah. So, but there are two caveats for it. If this has to work, you need to take care of two things definitely. Yes. One is ch chance favors only the prepared mind. Meaning, if you've not worked on the first and the second step well, it will not happen. Any lazy bum can sleep all day and say, idea aane wala hai. All right? It'll never happen. It'll never happen. You have to first get the raw material, work your backside of it, till you sweat, till you frustrate. And then, and then, if you are lucky, it'll happen. So, never, all these examples that we are giving, okay, whether it's Kekule, Einstein, uh, your um, Archimedes, they've all been, Newton, for example. I mean, Newton guy, I have this um, small uh, issue with. You, you know how the law of gravity was discovered, right? Newton was sitting under a tree and the, the apple fell. And ah, wow. But tell me, did Newton never go to the loo in the morning? <laughs> Things fall every morning. <laughs> All right. But anyways, that's a different story. So <laughs> probably his mind was not prepared then. So <laughs> you can't run away from what you have to do. All right. And to his frustration is the father of creativity. I, I love saying this because unless, you know, there is a scientific evidence today of this, that uh, there was this uh, Nobel laureate uh, neurosurgeon I was reading about. He says there is a form of dementia where the brain uh, slows down, okay, which affects the left temporal lobe, which is the part here. Or jab ye hota hai, when this happens, the left temporal lobe, the person starts getting more creative. Can you imagine this? That Dementia setting it, a typical kind of, very rare kind of dementia, which is left side up of the brain. Creativity starts increasing. Why does this happen? Because the right side starts getting freed. That's what the theory is. All right. And he's a, he's a Nobel laureate, so it's not coming a hocus pocus, some um, pop psychologist telling you this. All right. So, and there are other ways also where uh, fMRI, the Techniques have been used to figure out when sudden ideas, bursts of ideas happen, like the questions I asked. They uh, key up the mind to the computer and then figure out which part of the brain was active when sudden burst of an idea happened. All right? And they found that it's normally the right temporal lobe, which is just above your right ear. Somewhere here, something happens, a spark, and that's when it happens. So, frustration is getting the mind to go tired and put it to another switchboard which will help now, all right? So there's a scientific basis to this. And I'll leave you with my last favorite quote. It's Einstein who said, the intuitive mind is a sacred gift and the rational mind is a faithful servant. We rely on the rational mind, okay, every day, every morning. We have created a society that honors the servant and has forgotten the gift. And we need to change this society. Don't think too much about ourselves. We can do it. There's more powerful forces lying deep within. Coming from a man of his stature, all right? Very, very credible. So are you ready to use that? Great. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot. <laughs>